So I'm going to show this uh, middle design right here, how I might make this ramp that kind of curves and twists downwards at the same time here. You can kind of see a screenshot of an example of what it looks like there. And in Onshape, this is, uh, this is my earlier example. So I will go ahead and I'll go ahead and show you how I actually made that from the beginning. So I'm going to make a new part studio. And this is going to use that helix technique that we used uh, in the curvy tube as well. So I'm going to actually start off with the same kind of thing. I'm going to go to my top plane and sketch. I'm going to make a circle. And this circle is going to define basically the size of how big that curve is that goes around it. So this might need to be relatively big. Um, you might need to put a diameter on here, something even as big as like 48 inches or even bigger than that, depending on the size of your course. And I'm going to click the green check there. Uh, I'm going to also extrude this, but because I want this to be a pretty shallow thing, I'm going to say that maybe the level change on this is just six inches. And then similar to what I did with the curvy tube, I'm going to wrap a helix around this. I'm going to use that helix tool to allow me to generate that curve without having to worry about doing it myself. And this time, what's, uh, the one thing that's really special is if I look back at my example, it does, not make, uh, it does not make a full rotation. So in other words, if this was gonna make a full rotation, the end of that ramp would end up kind of pointing the same direction as the beginning of the ramp. But it only goes three quarters of the way around. So in Onshape, I'm gonna say that it's actually only 0.75 revolutions. In other words, it's only three quarters of a revolution there. So it's not the entire thing. And, um, and then I can go ahead and hit the green check there. So I'm good. Same kind of thing. I can turn the visibility off for that cylinder. And now all I have is that, is that sort of twisting path. So it's, that path is kind of twisted in two directions. It's rotating around this way. And if I look at it from the front of the side, I can also see that it is, uh, that it's angling down there as well. So same kind of thing here. I need to put a shape on the end of this to sweep. And so I'm going to do that same technique. I'm going to click sketch and I'm going to choose a mate connector instead of a sketch plane. I'm going to sketch right here. And this time, instead of using a circle, if I look back at this, this is basically like a sort of flat rectangular surface. So I'm going to use a different tool to sketch with. I'm going to use my rectangle, except I'm going to use my center point rectangle. Because what I want to do is I want to be able to sketch starting right at the end of that piece. And similar to what I did in the curvy tube example, I'm going to drag that out. And now I'm going to double click on my mate connector and I'm going to rotate this thing so that it is oriented correctly. So that's not right in this case. I rotated it around X. It looks like maybe I need to rotate around Y. That looks correct there, although the dimensions are wrong. In other words, it's really tall and not very wide at least it is oriented correctly now. So now I can go back and I can add my dimensions. So maybe I want the path that my golf ball can travel on. Maybe I want that path to be 18 inches wide. And maybe I want that path, if we look at how sort of tall or thick that is, let's say to be three inches tall. So I'm gonna come over here and set three inches. And the nice thing about using the center point rectangle tool there is it automatically continues to center that shape on the end of the, um, on the end of the path, okay? So I've got that part good. I now have the path that I'm gonna create and I have the path around which I'm gonna sweep it. So I'm just gonna go right back to my sweep tool. I'm gonna to choose to sweep this face and I'm gonna choose the sweep path as being my helix right there and I get that part. So let's, let's check. Does it look like those two things are gonna interfere? In other words, does it look like this is gonna go under here? looks like it to me so that looks pretty good i'm going to click the green check now if i wanted to adjust that to make that like a steeper drop i could always go back to that extrude and i could make it change by 12 inches like i could make that level change be 12 inches so you're going to see a more extreme sort of twist um, that ends up there if i wanted it to be shallower same kind of thing i could drop it back down maybe i would want it to be eight inches that it twists around there it will automatically update that helix and then i'm good to go there now this is sort of one section of that path, but because I have those nice rectangular faces at the end of it, I can actually just go in here if I want and I can extrude this face straight out to get part of that path and I could extrude, uh, whoops, I don't wanna do that at the same time. I can extrude this face out and then in a separate extrude, I could extrude this face out this way. 
And I can do that by eye, but more likely you'll be doing that using your dimension drawings to see how long those pieces need to be. And then just like before, if I click on those faces, I can edit the appearance and I can make those that nice sort of dark green that makes it look like they're actually part of the golf course. So that looks pretty good. So that's that sort of downward curving ramp. 